Hey, Scooby-Doo time, douchebag. Take off the mask. If Scooby-Doo has taught me anything, it's that the only thing to fear are crooked real estate developers. Listen, Velma, this isn't the Scooby gang, okay? So either shut up or get out. That's the freaking Scooby gang. Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo this crap. Even if you haven't seen a single Scooby-Doo movie or TV show since the 90s, you have an idea of how relevant it still is in pop culture. This Hanna-Barbera classic about teens solving mysteries helped to create a cartoon genre that showed Archie Comics the potential of its own characters and eventually allowed them to succeed big time where Hanna-Barbera could not. So I mentioned in a previous video that Archie Comics had a seamless transition into live action with the Riverdale TV universe. But now I'm thinking Archie Comics overall is like an American icon. So perhaps this video will be one of those icons under the radar videos. We all know how iconic Scooby-Doo is, but many don't know how Archie Comics walked so that Scooby-Doo could run. Both are now in the teen mystery genre and they both stayed relevant all this time by taking up for each other's weaknesses. Archie made comics and live action TV while Scooby-Doo made cartoons. And comics too, apparently? Let me explain. The Riverdale universe and characters like Jughead, Betty and Veronica, Archie and Sabrina Spellman have actually been around since the 40s. The Archie comics themselves were, as I like to call it, American slice of life and was about the lives of regular teenagers. And they came out in a time where superhero comics were growing in their initial popularity. After many, many, many issues and crossover spinoffs and art styles, we jumped to the 2010s where Archie Comics were producing more graphic novel style content and decided to go into horror. In October 2013, they launched Afterlife with Archie, which features Archie and the gang dealing with supernatural horror tropes like zombies, demons, and even Cthulhu. I'm actually a big fan of the supernatural and slice of life, so this dark Archie concept intrigued me. It was the first in the series to have a teen plus rating. The success of this led to another horror series, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, that launched in 2014. And just when you thought they got dark with their chains to the horror genre, the publishers also decided that in their new Life with Archie series that featured an adult Archie and real world problems, Archie would die in the end. Both Life with Archie and Afterlife with Archie can be seen as alternate parallel universes. And if you understand the state of the comics in the 2010s, then the current live action state in 2021 would make a lot more sense. These newer, darker takes on Archie inspired the CW shows Riverdale and Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. I haven't gotten past the second season of either of these shows, but I heard that each one is crazier than the last. And we are now in the sixth season of Riverdale. And it's looking like it takes from the alternate universes of Afterlife with Archie and Life with Archie. As I've heard, Riverdale spoiler alert, Archie basically chooses Betty over Veronica and is killed off like in the new comics, but in a crazy supernatural version of a Riverdale sort of way. Oh, my lifelong nightmare is finally over. Also, rest in peace, Archie. If course. The bar for horror, drama, and mystery was really raised in the 2010s. So this Archieverse that's been established fits right in and it seems to be really cool with the 14 and up crowd. But what if bloody supernatural live action drama isn't really your thing? What if you prefer the exact opposite with your spookiness? Something animated, easy to watch, and comedic. This is where Scooby-Doo fits in. If we start from the 2010s till now, Scooby-Doo is still fresh and relevant as ever, with a brand new movie or crossover special coming out every year. What keeps Scooby so groovy after all these years is probably its approachability and its nostalgia factor, from the fact that there's nothing else really quite like it. It's something Grandpa and Nana can watch with the grandkids. It's not too scary and not too cheesy, and we really have the genius of animation studio Hanna-Barbera to thank for making such a timeless classic. <laughs> But as a wide of a range Scooby-Doo has, there are some areas that it can't go. As an established cartoon, it has to stick to its own rules, where it can't be too serious or too realistic. 
but it's one of those push the envelope but keep it campy type of shows. See you in the morning. <sighs> he said he'll see me. Hmm. Scooby will update the humor and the setting a little bit while keeping the characters pretty much the same as they've been since the 70s. The evolution is similar to Archie comics, but very different. Archie had a family friendly image in the beginning, but decided to stick to a more realistic graphic novel approach. As we go back in the history, Scooby-Doo Where Are You was produced in 1969 by animation studio Hanna-Barbera and was basically a headlining Saturday morning cartoon during the 70s. It was the first in several mystery comedies developed by Hanna-Barbera and the one they made right after Scooby-Doo happened to be the Josie and the Pussycats cartoon. Cartoon. Josie and the Pussycats are indeed Archie comic book characters. How did Hanna-Barbera get involved with Archie? Well, a year before Scooby-Doo had come out, The Archie Show was a successful Saturday morning cartoon made by Hanna-Barbera's competition at that time, Filmation. Hanna-Barbera wanted to duplicate that type of success with a musical mystery type of cartoon and the studio went to Archie Comics with an idea to adapt one of their other properties. Archie agreed to collaborate with them and the Josie comic book had their own cartoon. It even got a crazy spin-off season in 1972 where Josie and the Pussycats were in outer space and started solving mysteries up there. A fun fact here, the Josie character Valerie was the first black female character to regularly appear in a Saturday morning cartoon. So as Hanna-Barbera had both Scooby and Josie under their belt, they both coincidentally had a live action movie come out in the early 2000s. The Josie film was okay I guess. It starred Rosario Dawson and Tara Reid but it bombed in theaters while the Scooby-Doo movie made three times its production budget and even had a sequel. By early 2000s standards, it was fine. They had Buffy the Vampire Slayer play Daphne and the best Shaggy cosplayer to date, but a jarringly CGI Scooby. It would be a whole decade later before another Hanna-Barbera property was made into a live action movie, but live action was never their strong suit. Hanna-Barbera is known for its animation, obviously, and that's exactly what it's been sticking to for the most part. If we go back to the Archie show and the filmation studio behind it, we'll see that during the 70s, they also produced a couple Archie spin-offs, including a show for Sabrina the Teenage Witch. But like most of Filmation's material, it only got one season, with just enough episodes to syndicate with. Even though it helped inspire Hanna-Barbera to make Scooby-Doo, Filmation had a hard time staying in production and ended up shutting down at the end of the 1980s. <laughs> By then, Hanna-Barbera had already dominated the Saturday morning cartoon scene. It seems that over the years, Archie Comics was great at print publications, but couldn't really translate into animation without a huge gimmick. You could kind of say that Archie is an American slice of life, and America doesn't know how to make a slice of life adaptation that isn't dull or boring. Japan sure does, though. But it's no surprise that Sabrina was the only Archie property to translate well outside of the Hanna-Barbera machine. It was a teen comedy about a half-witch, her witch aunties, and a talking cat. And besides having another animated show in the 2000s, it had a long-running sitcom on ABC called Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and even had a couple TV movies. Sabrina's popularity was the first example of how Archie Comics works better in live action than it does as a cartoon. The Riverdale characters are all based on normalcy. They're just your regular human teenagers. Joshi and the Pussycats just wanted to start a band with a quirky gimmick. And even though Sabrina had magical powers, she still made for a believable, down-to-earth teenager outside of that. 18% oh, interest on a student loan? That's bullshit. Hanna-Barbera does better with cartoons than it could ever do as a live action, simply because they usually feature talking anthropomorphic animal characters. 
Because of this, I think Hanna-Barbera and Archie Comics kind of have a two sides of the same coin type of relationship in the realm of entertainment. After seeing what Hanna-Barbera could do with Scooby-Doo's continued success and how well they handled Josie and the Pussycats, Archie Comics saw the teen mystery potential in their own characters. And while starting out with a quirky but normal everyday life approach to their stories, they eventually opened up to new genres. Archie perhaps would have never went the spooky mystery route had it not been for Scooby-Doo. Surely this is why Archie allowed Warner Media, the owners of Scooby-Doo, to produce adaptations of the Dark Archieverse, the adaptations we know as Chilling Adventures and Riverdale. Now I'm betting Warner Media is seeing how well this Dark Archieverse is being received and is taking notes, because I'm predicting we will be getting a dark live action version of Scooby-Doo sometime in the future, something they probably wouldn't have never tried if it had not been for Chilling Adventures and Riverdale. Scooby and Archie is really like the yin and yang of teen mystery. What you can't get out of campy Scooby-Doo you can get out of dark realistic Archie and vice versa. If you like blood and realism with special effects and the occasional sex scene, then take the live action teen mystery route. But if you like dumb crossovers and meta humor with an occasional action fantasy feel, take the cartoon teen mystery route. Some people will take both for the full experience. And I'm Team Scooby for the most part, but I'm willing to give these CW shows more of a watch. I did watch every episode of Supernatural, so why not? Great, so we're stuck in a cartoon with a talking dog. Not just any talking dog, THE talking dog. Well, thanks for watching. If you like this type of content, you know what to do. Follow my other socials too. I'm trying to stream more on Twitch since I got that GTA Definitive Trilogy. But until next time. See ya.